<gülüyor> Olmaz. Okey. Uh, uh, the 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 title talk is select selected topics in almost periodicity. That is actually the name of uh, my uh, sixth research monograph published with Walter de, de Greiter. But uh, my uh, this time uh, I have made the decision to to. Uh, Tell you something more about my new monograph, which will be published with Walter de Greiter. I think uh, during this year, uh, I, I'm expecting proofs actually. And the name of book is uh, uh, the name of book is uh, you, you you can see here the contents. Uh, the book has uh, around uh, uh, 540 pages uh, in some uh, some. Uh, uh, and this is the title of my new book. Uh, it is uh, my third monograph about almost periodic function. Uh, the name is Metrical Almost Periodicity uh, and Applications to Integral Differential Equations. The, the, the working title was uh, uh, Advances in Almost Periodicity, but the editor, so Walter de Greiter, uh, the, the Greiter uh, have insisted to, to change the title. And I think this is really, really, really good uh, title for this book. Uh, Kamal, it, it does not work. Yes. OK, OK. So, uh, OK, I, I will. I will. I will. Uh, 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 tell you uh, the basic things about almost periodic functions. Uh, it it is actually a, a product uh, of Danish mathematician Harald Bohr. Uh, you know, for uh, Niels Bohr, of course, uh, he is a Nobel Prize winning winning physicist from Denmark, and uh, uh, Harald Bohr and Niels Bohr are brothers. Uh, no, uh, many papers in physics and mathematics. Uh, Harald Bohr uh, worked with uh, series, with the, with the with the theory of numbers. Uh, uh, many papers about uh, Dirichlet series, and uh, he is uh, uh, he created the theory of almost periodic functions during the the the, the second decade of. Uh, last of the previous century around uh, 1925 you can see here uh, the, the 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 year uh, concerning some uh, people working before Bohr, i would like to mention uh, uh this is a french mathematician very famous but i i, I do not french uh, sorry uh Eschlangon and 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 uh, uh, danish uh, mathematician uh bor uh, ball ball not bor but ball so uh, uh what is actually uh innovation of harald bor uh if we have a continuous function defined on the uh, space r to the power n uh, we assume uh, a priori that it is a continuous function. Uh, X is uh, X is a, a complex Banach space. Uh, it can be also a topological vector space. Everything is the same. But uh, for simplicity, we assume here that uh, X is a complex Banach space. And uh, you can see the definition of an almost periodic function. So we say that F is almost periodic. If for each epsilon strictly greater than zero, we can find some finite real number L uh, such that uh, uh, any ball with, with the center at the point T zero uh, contains some uh, contains some uh, uh, point tau such that uh, the following inequality is satisfied for for all real real values of T. So it is. Like period, so if the function is periodic with period pi, uh, then it is periodic with period uh, n times pi. And if you 
take n times pi, uh, take a picture on the real line. Uh, this this uh, that set is uh, uh, relatively dense. So uh, we actually uh, have that any periodic function is almost periodic. Of course, we know that the the the, the converse statement is uh, not true in general. For example, uh, if you have a, a trigonometric polynomial, it is always uh, almost periodic, but it is not periodic. For example, if you take uh, the function uh, sinus of t and uh, sinus of square root of 2 times t, uh, the, the sum of uh, those two functions is a trigonometric polynomial, which is not periodic, but this is almost periodic function. So what is actually an almost periodic function? If you... If you uh, take all tri trigonometric polynomials. Uh, of course, the definition is very uh, known in, if polynomial depends on uh, several real variables. Uh, then uh, all trigonometric polynomials are bounded and continuous. And we know that uh, the, the space of bounded continuous functions uh, endowed with, with the, the soup norm is, uh, is a Banach one, actually. And uh, what is an almost periodic function? It is actually the, the, the vector space of almost periodic functions uh, is obtained uh, after uh, getting the closure. So we are getting the closure of all trigonometric polynomials in soup norm. And uh, we know every 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 uh, trigonometric polynomial, every uh, periodic function, uh, what does mean in in periodicity in several vari variables? It means actually being periodic in each variable. So uh, this is a very natural definition. And uh, we have that, uh, we know that every almost periodic function uh, is uh, bounded and uniformly continuous. Not only continuous, but uniformly continuous. And uh, I have already said this. This is my uh, third research monograph about almost periodic functions. What can we uh, do here? Uh, for beginning, if you take a, a closer look at this inequality, uh, so uh, look at this. This is f at the point t plus tau minus f of t. It is uh, uh, less or greater, uh, less or equal than epsilon. But uh, you you can you can also uh, put here plus. So uh, this function will be almost periodic. It can be easily proved. Uh, such functions are often are usually called uh, almost uh, anti-periodic. So if we take plus here, we obtain the notion of uh, almost uh, anti-periodicity. So uh, what is going on uh, further? If we if we uh, take here some uh, complex number C. Uh, if you take uh, here the complex number C, then we get the notion of C almost periodic function. And uh, the first research article about uh, C almost periodic functions was written by me and my co-authors. Uh, Kamal also worked later with us. Uh, maybe three years ago. And uh, it, it is a very... Uh, strange that if we uh, such uh, if we have a, such a notion uh, the first thing uh, okay uh, can c be arbitrary uh, the, the answer is negative uh, c must be equal uh, it's it, it must uh, belong uh, to 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 uh, the unit sphere its module must be equal to one. So this is, uh, I have so many papers published about this class of fu functions. Uh, 
uh, it is uh, of course uh, what is anti uh, periodic function i think you know if we, if we have uh, here plus and equal uh, to zero then we get the notion of uh, anti periodic function and we know that anti periodic function is always periodic just apply this uh, property two times so if tau is epsilon anti period then two times tau will be <laughs> the usual epsilon period so this is a very important class of functions and uh, with the uh, many many applications uh, in in the theory of fractional differential equations partial differential equations classical partial differential equations and uh, the the uh, what is the main result in, in the in the field it is obtained by the american mathematician bochner uh, who proves that uh, a very important thing uh, that uh, the a continuous function is almost periodic if for any sequence of real numbers we can always find its subsequence such that uh, the the sequence of it uh, these tra translations converge in in the space cb uh, r to the power n with the values in x and that is the famous bochner criterion and uh, how how to pre how to proceed further Uh, uh any 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 almost periodic function is continuous and uh, that is a problem because Lebeck uh, created the theory of uh, integrable new theory of integration uh, at the beginning of, of the 20th century so uh, we have uh, the class of measurable functions we have the class of LP local integrable functions and uh, the first step uh, after uh, Harald Bohr was made by uh, Russian mathematica ma mathematician Vyacheslav, Vyacheslav Stepanov uh, who created the theory of Stepanov almost periodic functions by removing by removing the continuity assumptions on f so uh, if uh, the function f is just locally p integrable where p where p uh, is uh, in the usual range of values p cannot be here plus infinity uh, and uh, if we have a locally p integrable function then we say that f is the pan of p almost periodic function if and only if it's uh, bochner transform is almost periodic uh, what does it mean bochner transform i, I will not explain in more detail here uh, we have uh, the the simple uh, the the simple uh, uh, the the simple uh, criterion here and the simple uh, uh, think when when f will be stepano p almost periodic and uh, this is a very very uh, important class of functions because now we are dealing with with non-continuous functions in general and uh, it is very very difficult to find i have many papers published in in in, in this direction uh, uh, stepanov class is very similar to bohr class just you just removing continuity what is going on between uh, how to find the function which is uh, almost periodic which is not almost periodic which is Stepano, something, uh, some concepts that, that intermediate uh, Stepanov and, and, and Bohr concepts. It, it is very uh, difficult. I will show you some uh, examples of Stepanov uh, functions. Uh, uh, there is a continuous Stepanov almost periodic functions, which is not Bohr almost periodic. Uh, the reason is quite simple that function uh, is not uniformly continuous. So we have an example of a continuous Stepanov almost periodic function, uh, which is not Bohr almost periodic. And uh, the year was uh, 1927. In the same year, the German mathematician uh, Weil, or Weil, Hermann Weil, 
uh, has created uh, a new a new theory of uh, of uh, a new theory of, of, of almost periodic function. And uh, here we have a definition of equi veil p almost periodic function. Uh, this class of function was very unexplored before uh, 1990. Maybe I can freely say something like that. And uh, I, 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 I have learned a lot of about this class of functions by reading the the the, the survey uh, article by Jan Andres, Czech mathematician and some Italian mathematician. And uh, this class is uh, very, very strange. I must to tell you that the class of equi veil p almost periodic function is very large. So if we have uh, Bohr uh, almost periodic functions, Stepano almost periodic functions, the, uh, there are two main concepts in, in this field. Uh, veil class is very large. So if you want to uh, find some functions that are real, uh, almost periodic, but not Stepano, almost periodic, you can find so many such functions. For example, if you ask me, uh, LP space, if you if, if take LP space, we know that uh, almost periodic function Cannot uh, cannot belong to this space if it is uh, non-zero. Only zero function uh, is almost periodic and uh, belongs to this space. So only only uh, the, the only almost periodic functions which is which belongs to LP space is zero function. But it is no longer true for it is also true for Stepanov class of course. But it is no longer true for Vale class. So. Uh, how to find the counter example, it is very simple. It is very simple because uh, it, take any compact set and uh, take uh, its characteristic function. That characteristic function is of course uh, P integrable and, uh, but this function is uh, veil P almost periodic. And the usual definition of, of veil uh, P, P almost periodic uh, function is given in, in this way, and uh, I, I'm showing you this uh, exponent here. Uh, it is the usual while norm. And uh, uh, the value of n over pi, uh, p is uh, very strange. It is the usual coefficient in the one dimensional setting, we have one over p, but uh, uh, what, uh, what have I, done uh, three or four years before, I have put simply, funny, in, in the funniest way, I have put here sigma, uh, any any uh, exponent uh, strictly greater than zero. And uh, I call that class weighted veil class. Uh, so if you take a compact set and uh, take a characteristic function of a compact set, uh, uh, it will belong to this space. Uh, where the, the, the exponent is replaced with the sigma, where sigma is uh, uh, any any positive real number. And the second concept, it is much bigger. This is very uh, uh, strange concept. Uh, uh, you, you, many mathematicians and many, many mistakes in, in, in the existing, existing literature uh, have been made because the authors do not recognize the difference between these two classes of functions. So uh, for, for some people, uh, a function is equivail almost periodic if <laughs> and only if it is veil P almost periodic, which is a complete nonsense. Because this class of veil P almost periodic function is larger than the previous one. It is larger than the previous one. And this concept, I will not read all uh, things from definition, was uh, discovered by Russian mathematician uh, Kovanko. So this is uh, this is uh, actually a Vail-Kovanko class of almost periodic functions, and this uh, this class of function 
uh, functions uh, contains the usual the usual uh, the, the usual whale class and uh, of course uh, you can also put here sigma and obtain some contribution in this way and uh, we are getting to 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 uh, the member of fellow trinity uh, i think he is uh, he was a professor uh, in, in oxford uh, Besikovic, you know, maybe you have heard for Besikovic. Uh, he he works with Hardy, uh, Littlewood, and he created the concept of uh, Besikovic uh, almost periodicity uh, two years after Harald Bohr, so in 1927. Uh, Besikovic uh, class is uh, famous. Uh, some people call it Marcinkiewicz class. Uh, maybe you have heard uh, of uh, Marcinkiewicz uh, multiplier theorem, uh, but uh, actually th this uh, semi-norm, which is very popular in mathematics, was discovered by Besikovic and not by Marcinkiewicz. Uh, okay, Mar Marcinkiewicz uh, uh, gave many, many uh, interesting contributions about this class of functions and about this semi-norm uh, uh, during uh, the, the, the third dec decade of the previous century. And the Besikovic semi-norm semi is very important in mathematics. It is usually defined in this way. Uh, so, uh, 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 Requiring a limit, it is it is very very uh, strong. You know, uh, there is a such classes of function. Kamal uh, knows that uh, pseudo almost periodic functions uh, sometimes limit uh, exists, and uh, sometimes it is zero. And uh, uh, in general, limit does not exist as t time goes to plus infinity, but limit superior always exists in, in, in uh, it can be infinity also. So, uh, the, the, so you're taking, you're taking uh, this uh, term, the measure of integration is uh, uh, two times t to the power n, and we are dividing this integral with, with the measure uh, we have some measured theoretical approaches to almost periodicity, and after that we are we are uh, uh, taking uh, its uh, uh, power power to the, is one over p, and limit superior always exists. So this is a semi-norm. Why semi-norm? If we take uh, uh, it is a usual sem semi-norm, but it is not norm. So you can always, uh, you can simply construct an example of a non-zero function. Non-zero, I think, in Lebesgue sense, uh, not uh, in, in Lebesgue sense, not almost every very equal to zero, so that uh, its basic semi-norm is equal to zero. It is very simple to construct such a function. Uh, with the basic semi-norm equal to zero. And this, that class of functions is very, uh, very important for us. Uh, this is definition. Uh, the usually the space of functions with the sequence semi-norm is denoted by uh, KP. And uh, after that, we are making new classes. We, are, we divide the space and making the class uh, every uh, every function uh, uh, satisfying that its Besikovic semi-norm is equal to zero is automatically uh, Besikovic almost periodic because it is it is zero after taking classes. And uh, this semi-norm induce the in, in, induce uh, the norm on this space, and uh, this space is complete. Uh, Marcinkiewicz uh, was the first person who proved that this space is complete. I must to tell you that these spaces, uh, these spaces, uh, 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 if, if you take uh, 
uh, almost periodic functions with the soup norm. It is complete. It is a Banach space, of course. Step one of uh, uh, P almost periodic functions uh, together endowed with the step one of P norm. Uh, the space is also complete, but this space is not complete. And this is very trouble for people working in nonlinear analysis because uh, we are uh, exploring uh, sem se semi linear problems and uh, we have some uh, kind of uh, Nemitsky operators. Uh, and it is very important for semi linear equations if the, if the space is not complete. How to apply Banach principle or some 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 else uh, fixed point here? It is very uh, it is very uh, difficult to find uh, any fixed point theorem uh, for applications if, if the space is not complete. So the class of equivail p almost periodic functions is very uh, difficult for applications because uh, the this space of equivail p almost periodic functions is not. Uh, a Banach space uh, when uh, equipped with 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 veil distance with veil uh, semi norm and uh, this is uh, very uh, very uh, the the it is not so simple to 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 uh, to prove that basic which almost periodic functions form uh, a complete space uh, when uh, equipped with the Besikovic semi norm, uh, the, 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 the original proof for Mar Marcinkevich contains maybe five pages. Uh, and it, it is not so simple uh, construction, uh, construction of, of limit function is, is a genius. And uh, uh, it, it was proved uh, 10 years after, after, after Besikovic. Uh, introduction of this norm. Well, okay, you can hear uh, so many other concepts here. Uh, uh, for me, it was very for for writing this book. For me, it was very uh, important to mention some names, uh, some Polish mathematicians within this field. Uh, uh, the the first one is uh, Stoinski uh, Stanislaw. I think his name is Stanislaw. Uh, he's from Poznan. Uh, um, I have uh, I, I have I have been strongly influenced by uh, uh, some papers of this mathematician, and some beautiful results in this theory are obtained uh, obtained recently. But but this uh, very young mathematician uh, Adam Navrotsky, uh, uh, who uh, uh, I think uh, this is the famous name in the in the field. It is Darius Bugayevsky. And uh, we have, after that, we have a, a natural generalization of all those almost automorphic functions. Uh, it was discovered by Bochner in 1955. Uh, Bochner has investigated uh, some problems in differential geometry. And uh, actually, that paper was published in Torino in 1955. Uh, many people... Uh, does not know for that paper, uh, they think that, that the class of almost automorphic functions was discovered by Bochner in 1962 in, in the publish uh, of uh, the paper. That paper will, uh, has only four pages and it is published in the United States, but it is not true. The first paper written by uh, Bochner uh, was published in Torino in 1955, and this is the definition. Any almost periodic function is almost automorphic. So uh, the, the, the counter statement is not true. Uh, almost automorphic functions are always bounded and continuous, and like, like almost periodic functions, uh, they're... Uh, uh, equipped with the, with the soup norm, uh, almost automorphic functions form a Banach space. It is a Banach space. It is a complete space. And here is a natural definition. Uh, for every sequence, we can find its subsequence and, and the limit mapping uh, G, uh, such that the following equalities 
uh, hold true. So what is what is actually going here? Uh, the first limit equation is very important, but if you take only for the, if you if you're working only with the first limit equation, uh, you you're always uh, lose, losing something. You're always losing something, and the second. Uh, the second equation is uh, very important. So, uh, in the first limit equation, uh, for a subsequence a k of b k, uh, b k, uh, we must have that uh, uh, it converts to this limit function. But after uh, <laughs> this is this is something very similar to the first limit equation. You can see uh, if it is very natural to. Uh, to make uh, t minus a k and and uh, we uh, we are asking ourselves is it true that it will be f no it is not true sometimes we must require uh, that condition and that this second limit equation is very very uh, very important you know and uh, just to say uh, I have uh, published many papers. Uh, with uh, my colleague uh, from Russia, Vladimir Fyodorov, uh, in Chelyabinsk, uh, where I have been uh, visiting professor also, and uh, with some other people, uh, based on uh, investigation of Angelo Favini, Italian mathematician, and uh, Atsushi Yagi, uh, Japanese mathematician, who published uh, uh, their famous monograph about abstract degenerate differential equations. So, uh, it, why degenerate? Uh, you can not solve the equation uh, with uh, respect to the, to the highest uh, derivative. So if you, I, I okay, this is uh, this is this is the 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 famous Poisson heat equation. Uh, I have made some application in the study of uh, the existence and uniqueness of some uh, uh, some. Uh, almost periodic type and almost automorphic type solutions to this equation. What is the problem here? Uh, if, if this function m of x is strictly greater than zero, and uh, if it is bounded below by some po po positive constant, then uh, it, this problem is not serious. You can always divide you can always divide uh, by m of x and obtain an equivalent non-degenerate equation. But what is going on if you cannot divide? So the usual, the usual choice in the in the theory of degenerate equation is uh, that m of x is a characteristic function of some interval. Uh, so if if you take interval zero one. And take uh, the its characteristic function that would be, for example, m, m of x. It will be zero here, zero here, and you cannot divide. And uh, uh, how how to solve the equation? What is the the, ba the, the basic approach? Uh, we are dealing with multi multi-valued linear operator. So uh, we make a sub substitution here. We this is the first step. We we call this function u or w v of tx and this term is uh, cannot be read this cannot be written like the equality this uh, you can calculate v and we we are getting here uh, some some uh, this is laplace translate of laplace classical uh, and uh, you're mu multiplying with m of x to the power minus one but it is not a function it is multi valued linear operator and this equality becomes inclusion and uh, now you are working with inclusion so we we have uh, the equation of type u prime of t is an element belongs to a where a is a multi valued linear operator u of t plus f of t and come on now for the theory of course i i know uh, you know for the monograph of Pazi, probably you have heard for the monograph of Pazi, 
uh, within that field, semi-groups of linear operators or angle, angle. Uh, uh, so uh, what is the next step? The next step is to create the theory of uh, strongly continuous semi-groups uh, which are uh, generated by multi-valued linear operators. If we have a, a non-degenerate semi-group of operator, T of zero is always the identity operator. It is no longer true for degenerate semi-groups of operators. T of zero is projector. We can say only that. T of zero is projector only. We can say something like that. And uh, uh, after that, uh, we have uh, the natural generalizations. We have Hilly Yoshida theorem, which is the uh, crucial in our theory, the main result in theory of, of strongly continuous semi groups obtained by a uh, group of mathematicians uh, during the, I think the, the final result was uh, given in 1948. Uh, Phillips Miadera also worked in that field. Uh, this the the theorem has a natural generalization to the to degenerate semi groups of operators. So we have uh, Hilyoshida type theorems for such class of semi groups. Uh, not to go further about this class of uh, equations, just to mention that we can, of course, uh, uh, can consider uh, the the fractional analogs, and this is the fractional analog of Poisson heat equation with Caputo fractional derivative. And uh, uh, this is uh, this is uh, uh, the equation in Helder in Helder spaces. It is uh, very uh, important to to mention this thing. Of course, there are so many results about almost periodic uh, solutions of this equation. But if you uh, if you uh, if you take a closer look at the Laplacian, Laplacian, just the Laplacian in the Helder space, it does not generate a strongly continuous semi-group. We know that. It is not a sectorial operator. And uh, after that, uh, uh, the only we can say that is uh, uh, Laplacian is an almost sectorial operator. It, this is a very important class of operators for our theory uh, because... Uh, after that, uh, uh, about analytic uh, uh, strongly continuous sem uh, semi groups, uh, we are we are uh, we are not getting a strongly continuous semi group, but uh, the the semi group uh, with the singularity at zero. So uh, it is uh, uh, very known in the theory of uh, abstract evolution. Uh, differential equations uh, uh, we all, all of us know uh, know for the paper of Wall, the German mathematician uh, who uh, uh, who created the whole theory of such equations in Helder spaces and uh, the theory of almost sectorial operators uh, is very important for for solving such such type of equations. Uh, what are we doing uh, within this theory? It is a, a little bit stupid to say, but there are so many papers uh, written about that. So if we have some operator family, uh, we, are, uh, we, we can consider some abstract uh, differential equations without initial conditions. Without initial conditions on the real line, for example. Uh, you have an equation of type u prime is equal to a u of t plus f of t. A is a linear operator, for example, and a can generate, for example, strongly continuous semi group. This is an operator family. Uh, t of t is usual, but it this R can be also fractional solution operator family, some uh, operator family. Uh, which is a solution uh, operator family to some abstract Volterra equation, uh, not only fractional, it can be Volterra equation. And the solutions uh, is uh, fine in the following form. So uh, uh, if, uh, this is 
the range of integration is from minus infinity to t, like in, in Weyl concept of fractional derivatives. Uh, Weyl was the, 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 the first man who defined the fractional der derivatives through integration over this interval. Weyl was the first one. And uh, this is uh, this is the <laughs> sorry classical uh, classical finite convolution product, which uh, always uh, has uh, some nice properties. Uh, it is uh, it is famous for <laughs> uh, applications uh, because Laplace transform uh, it is supported by Laplace transform. If you you know if if you take Laplace transform of this uh, function, it will be Laplace transform of R times Laplace transform of F. So it is very famous for the Laplace transform. And uh, we know that uh, derivative. So of course, I will I will show you. Um, I, I This is my uh, third uh, monograph about almost periodic functions. And I, I, I it is my strong belief. If, if you take the first one, the second one, and the third one, you will get almost complete knowledge about almost periodic functions. If 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 it if uh, some things are not uh, explored, uh, we have mentioned and quote so many references about 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 uh, such topics. Uh, uh, in in this monograph, I I have continued. Uh, I have. Uh, I have continued such uh, investigation. In in the second one uh, called select selected topics in almost periodic, I have quoted maybe uh, forty research monographs about almost periodic functions. Some uh, some of them are very uh, old, old uh, Russian monographs. Uh, 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 Kazakhstan uh, published in Kazakhstan, published in uh, all over the world. And uh, in this in this monograph, I, I have continued and find uh, fifteen more research monographs and some new papers uh, about almost periodic functions, not uh, uh, not not mentioned in the previous one. And uh, problems, there are so many unsolved problems about almost periodic functions. If you take the second one, I will. Uh, uh, tell about American mathematician uh, Gregory Spradlin. Uh, he works in uh, West Point Military Academy and he's a very strange man. I have tried to contact him. He, uh, it is not, uh, what is the difference between one dimensional setting and multi-dimensional setting? So if we have, uh, if we have one dimensional almost periodic function, we know that it is continuous bounded. So it is in a strip. It is like periodic function uh, graph, but we know that uh, has uh, uh, an almost periodic function uh, has uh, infinitely many uh, local e e extremum points, local extremum, local minimums or local maximum. It must have, <coughs> but it is not not uh, not still longer in multi-dimensional setting. If we take a function uh, which uh, uh, maps the plane, the plane, the whole plane in some uh, complex space, uh, then uh, it is not true. It can it, it can be without any uh, limit minimum or maximum problem. Uh, critical points, uh, the, the existence of critical points is very difficult in multi-dimensional setting, maybe. And uh, we, uh, Kamal, uh, uh, we have written maybe five, five or six research articles by now together or with some other mathematicians. In this second point, uh, this is uh, the, the, the first point is about uh, the higher, uh, the, the, the Cauchy problems uh, with the higher order derivatives. We usually, uh, in, in this theory, we are solving the, 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 the first order equation and the second order equation. Uh, but if n is uh, strictly greater than two, uh, problems always exist in our theory. And uh, here we have an, interest, in, an interesting result about uh, the higher order abstract Cauchy problem of this type. 
some periodic type conditions are used and and this uh, this this guy is <laughs> he is actually not a guy he is a very old man uh, is uh, very important for me uh, kamal has no paper together with him he's in bratislava he's a Slo member of slovakian academy of sciences and arts and uh, his name is michal fetchkan at the beginning of his career he uh, he has investigated the periodic solutions of, of star, star system there is uh, so many nonlinear equations we have here some nonlinear uh, equations of the second order uh, and uh, the crucial the, the the first steps uh, in this theory was made by French mathematician uh, Poincaré. Uh, he was the first who created the theory of periodic functions, uh, periodic solutions of uh, partial differential equations. This theory uh, has been improved by some people, and now we have uh, uh, if. But almost periodicity is uh, meaningless here. You cannot apply such, such results to almost periodic functions, only to periodic. And the the, the crucial, the the crucial theory, the the, the basic theory uh, is uh, actually it is so called Kant theory. Uh, maybe you have heard for uh, have you heard of Kant theory? It is Kolmogorov, Kolmogorov, Arnold, Moser and the uh, Kolmogorov, Arnold Moser, Kamp theory. It is, uh, uh, I, I'm not working with the, within this, this theory, but many interesting results were obtained also by Brezis, you know, for Brezis, Barbu, uh, Da Prato, uh, some, uh, many, many, many nice results. And uh, uh, there is a guy from uh, Praha, from Czech Republic, uh, called Otto Vejvoda. He was the the best Czech mathematician in this field. He wrote an excellent book about periodic solutions, Otto Weber. And uh, uh, what to say, uh, have, uh, the, have a meet the deadline, uh, how, how? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, you, you, should, you should conclude. <laughs> okay, 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 Benjamin. <laughs> but five minutes is good for you? Yes. Okay, great. Okay. I have five minutes. Yeah, that's uh, great. Okay, thanks. Uh, um, uh, after that, uh, oh, what is going on? You can ask me, what is going on with the ordinary differential equations? So of course, I have collected, all, uh, collected here some uh, results about uh, ordinary differential equations also. You know, the, the, this is... For example, you can uh, you uh, almost periodic functions are important because if you working with uh, partial differential equations, you need distributions. You you cannot ultra distributions, distributions, hyper functions. You you must do with some generalized functions. If you work with ordinary differential equations, <laughs> no distributions, no generalized generalized functions theory. And we have we have quoted I have quoted here uh, many results about periodic or almost periodic uh, solutions of ordinary differential equations. Uh, some uh, some uh, some uh, some examples. Uh, uh, And uh, the, I would I would like to 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 uh, to show you the the famous class of equation. Now we are dealing with uh, discrete equations, so we can we can we can solve uh, difference equations. And now I'm uh, working with difference equations, but it can be also semi-discrete. So uh, uh, the domain for solving an equation uh, can be. Uh, discrete in one vari variable. For example, the first uh, uh, variable is t. It is continuous. Uh, t can be greater than zero, belong to the whole real line. But the second, the second argument is uh, is not uh, continuous. It is a discrete one, and it it can be only an in integer, only an integer, uh, number positive integer. Uh, uh, this class of equations uh, is uh, very important for our theory. It is uh, like impulsive equations, like uh, 
uh, fractional equations. Uh, it is very difficult to create a theory of fractional impulsive equations. But uh, here we we have uh, the famous uh, <clears throat> class of equations, uh, the so-called uh, neutral differential equations with piecewise constant arguments. Uh, we, so many research monographs about this class of functions uh, have been published so far. And uh, I would like to mention what is a piecewise constant argument. Uh, look at this uh, this term here in, in, in the, in the lar large brackets. It is uh, uh, two times, uh, of course, the, we, we, we have here the, the function the largest part of x, the largest integer part of x. So this part is not t. Uh, it is be between t and t plus 1, something between. And you can also uh, say uh, many, many interesting uh, results about uh, almost periodic solutions of such class of equations have obt obtained by the, the member of Chinese Academy of Sciences uh, Yuan, this 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 guy here, he uh, he obtained many interesting results about almost periodic solutions of these equations. But the crucial uh, the, the 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 essence of problem is is uh, how to solve how uh, how uh, what, what approach uh, how to solve these equations. You must discretize it, and after that, uh, from almost periodic sequence you must pass to the almost periodic functions. So uh, uh, you can also uh, take uh, in, in place of two of the number two, you can you can you can put it the number m or number three, but the, the things are very complicated because if we put here two, then we obtain uh, in, in, in the whole analysis, we obtain uh, the, the, the equation of order two. If we, if we Put three, we we will get the cu cubic equation. So it will be very difficult to say what is going on in, in a general case. Uh, the choice uh, with two it is very difficult. But putting m here when m is greater than five, it is almost very 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 difficult. Okay, uh, we have uh, so many examples. Uh, uh, so many applications. Uh, uh, this is a Kolmogorov Arnold Moser theory. Yes, it is uh, the the basic theory for finding periodic solutions of PDS. So, I would like to thank uh, all members for uh, being uh, here with us, and uh, uh, that would be all. Thank you very much.